The Philadelphia Eagles just beat the New Orleans Saints in a very stressful game, 15 to 12. In today's video, I give all my thoughts, all my reactions, and all of my post-game analysis. And as a brief disclaimer, I am a pretty diehard Eagles fan. So first, general thoughts. Uh, Nick Sirianni had one of the worst coach games I have ever seen. It was very stressful for me, and I didn't appreciate that. But one, first off, I, I have to get to it, and I know classic Eagles fans talking about things that went bad when you won the game against a good team. But still, I have to talk about it. At the end of the first half, the Eagles choose to go for it on fourth down and one in the New Orleans red zone with 15 seconds remaining and one timeout. It made, oh, and not to mention the score is three to zero and your defense has been balling out the whole game. It made absolutely zero sense. It didn't help the team at all. I don't even think analytics would agree with it at this point. So, well, yes, I'm okay with going for it on fourth down sometimes. It may be even a decent amount of time like any fan seems to support in a young fan. But this was just stupid. The best case scenario, you get it on fourth and one, you call your timeout, and then you get one chance to throw the ball into the end zone and then you kick the field goal. So you're willing to risk the three points in a three to zero game for one chance at throwing the ball in the end zone when you haven't been able to score a touchdown the entire game that it was so dumb and it was so frustrating and then i'll bring up the next two coaching just weird moves from nick sirianni he's like he saw last week against the falcons people were getting on him for being conservative and then he goes super super aggressive and it was it was so dumb i would have coached a better game from that perspective but then in the second half, fourth and three on the Saints, like 35 yard line, we could have set up a pretty, pretty easy Jake Elliott field goal. He can hit 50 yarders, no problem. Instead, the Eagles go for it on fourth and three. It is still three to zero at this point. We still could have kicked a field goal to tie the game, but Nick Sirianni just doesn't care and goes for it fourth and three this ends in even an easy like tush push if it was a tush push i'm okay with it i understand but this was not this made no sense and of course we didn't make it and then finally we let jake elliott kick a 60 yard field goal uh when we, he hasn't kicked any field goals that game why is this the field goal you're gonna let jake elliott kick he's only kicked it that far once in his career he kicked it against the Giants 61. He's never kicked a 60 yarder other than that. I guess you're confident in your guys, but that just didn't make any sense. But okay, I got I got through my coaching talk, so I guess I'll walk through the game. So start off, the Eagles defense plays phenomenal. This is the best game the Eagles defense have played in the past two years, since 2022. They hold the Saints to 12 points. This is a team that scored 45 points a game the first two weeks. We hold them to 12. We give them a field goal on the first drive, I believe, maybe the second. And then for the next two and a half quarters, they don't do anything on offense. The Eagles offense on the other side of the ball constantly, frustratingly, drives down the field. And then in the first half, Jalen Hurts makes disastrous mistakes, throwing an interception in the end zone, once again, a bad interception, and then, even worse, fumbling the ball at about the 45-yard line, but it was a terrible fumble. It, the guy, the defender didn't even hit the ball, he hit his, le like, he hit his ankles, and Hurts was just holding so loosely onto that football that he fumbled. These were both killers. And if it weren't for an excellent defense performance, could have cost you the game again. This is like Green Bay 2.0. So that was frustrating. Then there were two more possessions where the Eagles got into the Saints territory, went for it on fourth, and didn't get it. So that was four times where they made it into Saints territory, didn't score a single point until the fourth quarter. 
So going into the fourth quarter, I'm very stressed, and I just don't know what to think. So it feels like we've been the better team. We've been going up and down the field. The Saints haven't been going up and down the field. And then finally the fourth quarter comes, and Saquon Barkley hits a home run, 65-yard rushing touchdown. Then the Saints come in, come back in the lead, take the lead, and I'm thinking, oh, well, last year I might have been confident in this team coming back. But after what I saw Jalen Hurts do, a minute left against the Falcons, not confident. And then Dallas Goddard runs it 70 yards to the five-yard line. Saquon Barkley runs it in, touchdown, and it's over, essentially. Defense puts up a nice little stand. So, this was one of the most stressful games I've watched in a long time. I would just... And I think it probably was for a lot of the Eagles fans out there. Overall analysis, Jalen Hurts. This was a, a C-plus game for Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts had two terrible turnovers. But, other than that, he played decent. I know other than that is huge, which is why it's a C+. Plus. A C+, plus is not a good grade. But... It passed, it passed, he got 300 yards. The Eagles should have had over 20 points if Nick Sirianni just kicked some field goals. So, that's kind of where I'm there. He had 300 yards, 29 for 38. Uh, he, he kept some plays alive on his feet. I, he looked decent. And this is a game without AJ Brown, and then at the end, without Devontae Smith. So, you have to give him some credit there. C plus, he was okay. Saquon Barkley, had a rough first half. We just didn't use Saquon Barkley in the first half. And then the second half, especially the fourth quarter, Saquon Barkley explodes with that long touchdown and then the second touchdown and then the two-point conversion. And I would like to say, when we signed Saquon Barkley, I was not for it. I was not for signing Saquon Barkley at all. I was like, why would you pay a running back big money? But Howie Roseman, I give him credit. He's smarter than we are. And he got this one right because he has been worth every dollar through these first three games. He's looked like the best Eagles player on the offense. As good as AJ Brown. So, I even though it's just been three games, I'm willing to admit where I was wrong. Howie, you were right. Saquon was a great addition. Thank you, Giants. Uh, the receiving core, Dallas Goddard. Had the best game he's had maybe in his career 170 yards crazy game it shows if we just throw the ball to him he's really good we just never do so maybe next week who knows if we'll have aj brown or Devonte smith maybe it will be another huge dallas goddard week Devonte smith played very good seven receptions 10 targets 80 yards and he got injured on a extremely dirty play that I do not understand how it was not a penalty. Devontae Smith catches the ball. They drive him back five, maybe seven yards. And after the Saints have driven him back seven yards, a defensive lineman comes in from the other side and nails him either in the back of the head or at the top of his back. This was clearly after the play was over. They drove him back seven yards. He's a small guy. He wasn't putting up that much of a fight and then he gets blindsided. The Saints, or the referees, don't even call a penalty. It makes no sense. He's hurt, he has, might be a concussion, but he was out for the game. If it's a concussion, he's probably out for next week too. But it didn't seem like he was seriously injured, but he was definitely hurt. And after the Saints player who hurt him in a dirty hit uh, saw, that Jay, saw that Smith was on the ground, he, then, he spit on him. And there were no penalties. How? The, re the announcers barely even mention this, but that was some of the dirtiest plays, series of plays that I've ever seen. Like, how can you get away with spitting on someone in an NFL game and nothing happens? That was absolutely ridiculous. And then, for the other receivers, it was nice to see finally these third, fourth, and fifth wide receivers get the ball. So that, you know, we've been... We've been paying them. People liked them in the offseason. And they finally spread the ball out a little bit. I wouldn't say anyone really flashed that much. Uh, but 
but there were eight different people who caught receptions. So that was nice to see. As for the offensive line of the Eagles, it played very well. There were two injuries, very concerning. Mekhi Becton, which was bad. He had an ar- a hand injury. And of course, you don't want an lineman to hurt. But the huge deal, that absolutely enormous deal, Lane Johnson getting injured. I did not know the Eagles could overcome this because we never do overcome this. Whenever Lane Johnson doesn't play, the Eagles lose. That's just how it goes. But somehow we survived. The offensive line played well. While Jalen Hurts did get sacked four times, I didn't think there was that much pressure on him. And excellent game from the offensive line. So very pleased. I am worried about the injuries going into next week but excellent game by the offensive line. Once again, offensive line and Saquon Barkley both get A grades, and Jalen Hurts, he's uh, he's, let, he's letting this team down so far. He's not been the Jalen Hurts that I was expecting, but we'll see. Maybe the old Jalen will come back. It's not like he's been absolutely terrible. We are 2-1. and one. We have played three teams that could easily all be playoff teams but Jalen Hurts has not been good enough and the coach has not been good enough as for the defensive side of the ball this is an A plus this I have been happy with the defense the entire season I thought the defense did a good job against the Falcons although they did have a meltdown of the last minute which I honestly cannot explain it seems like maybe uh, prime time is just not the Eagles defense's specialty, which is a little concerning because, you know, playoff games will come down to prime time. But other than that, so the rest of the Falcons game, most of the Packers game, and all of this game, the Eagles defense has played well. In this game, they were able to dominate the line of scrimmage. They completely shut down the New Orleans Saints rushing game. They did have 89 rushing yards. That's on 29 attempts, 3.1 yards per carry. So that's completely shutting them down. And then this shut down their play action game. Derek Carr turned into a pumpkin and he died. He was 14 for 25, one touchdown, one interception of 40.6 QBR. He had the worst game of his season by far. He was just he wants it what we have seen so far this year from Derek Carr or the Saints. And that's not because they just didn't know what they were doing. That's because the Eagles defense played well. Eagles linebackers, I thought, played fairly well. And then the corners played, in my opinion, extremely well. These corners and DBs had to bring in a Blankenship with that game ceiling interception. That was great as well. But I thought Quinion Mitchell played well. Slay, when he was in there, played well. Unfortunately, he got hurt. Um, really, the passing defense, overall pretty good. They allowed 142 passing yards. We're happy with that. We're happy with that. We allowed one touchdown. That's awesome. If you just allow one touchdown, you should win the game. You know, don't think I'm being too bold there. Uh, there were two or three long passes to Rashid Shahid. In the first two games, he catches those for long touchdowns. In this game, Slay and Quinion Mitchell each break up one of those long passes, and that probably saved the Eagles game. Because this, this whole game, we were at long Saints touchdown from just it being over, because we weren't scoring points. But the defense played phenomenal. Once again, Strong red zone defense. This is three games in a row, and I'm really glad to see. I think we have a very good red zone defense. Even after a punt block, they get the ball in the 25. They don't even score. They go for it on fourth down, don't get it. So, this defense. Uh, I'd like to highlight Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis, the two D tackles in the middle. In my pregame video, I said, I want these two defensive tackles to dominate this game, and they did. They were the reason we won this game, especially Jalen Carter. He didn't have any sacks, but he was all over the place. And then Jordan Davis 
had a minus, I think, 12 yard sack that kind of ended a drive. So they played phenomenal. They played great. Josh Sweat played well. Uh, BG played well. Bryce Huff still appears to uh, be missing in action. He seems to have been a waste of a high price free agent signing. And I don't want to give up on him too soon, but through three games, he's been terrible. He has been pretty useless. You know what is crazy is Bryce Huff or Jalen Hurts, who has more tackles the past two games? Jalen Hurts. So, not great for Jalen Hurts. Uh, terrible for Bryce Huff. Not great to see that. Nolan Smith played a little bit, played okay. Milton Williams played very well, too. This whole defense, though. This whole defense was great. And then going forward, 2-1. and one, Cowboys lost. They got blown out. Well, they almost got blown out. Then the Ravens kind of let them back in it. But they lost to the Ravens. They're 1-2. and two. The Giants, I believe, are now 1-2. and two. They did beat the Browns. And then we'll have to wait and see tomorrow how Washington is. But it seems like the Eagles will be in first place of the division, right where they belong, setting up for that home playoff game. So, what were your thoughts on the game? I would say just a nice, another stressful Eagles game. Eagles win. And that's all I can really expect from this team is a nice, stressful Sunday. But please like, subscribe, comment, and uh, I'll see you later.